Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Nerd Caliber. I'm here with Mango Lou Cosplay. What uh, what cosplay are you showcasing today? I am cosplaying Stocking from the show Panty and Stocking, and it's, it's her angelic form, the transformation one that she has, <laughs> the transformed outfit. You showed me the photos, and they it looks amazing. Um, uh, how how did you put this? <laughs> where did the idea of putting this together come from? Um, so the idea came from, well, like certain like materials inspire me a lot, and something that I've been seeing a lot of is use of reflective uh, fabrics. Um, I actually purchased a costume. Um, at the beginning of the year that was all reflective and I loved it so much that I was like, where can I get this fabric? Um, so I looked it up, I found it on, on uh, Mood Fabrics, bought a whole bunch and then I was like, hmm, what would work really nice with this fabric? And I was like, stocking because she's like super pretty and her like transformed version and like I, I can like make it all glow like how she kind of appears in the show. So it, I would definitely say I was definitely inspired by the materials itself. Like I wanted something hard to work with and, and something new and something unique. So I was like, reflective costume, go. <laughs> and, and I just went from there. <laughs> okay. So th that, that anime is pretty popular. Why do you think so many, so many people uh, gravitate towards it? Um, I think a lot of people gravitate towards it because it's funny and lighthearted. Um, so like, it's a pretty like casual show to watch. Like you can like, like you don't really have to be following super close with the story to watch it. So you can really like watch it like whenever. Um, and it's just like something nice to watch, especially like during these weird times. It's, it's just, like, what are you going to do uh, at home? Oh, I'm going to watch a lot of anime. <laughs> uh, like, like this one being definitely one of them. Like I binge watched this one. Um, like a few months before I started the project and, and, and then I was like oh I got like this would be so fun to make so okay <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's talk about the costume from the idea to putting together can you explain that um okay so for the reflectiveness um so what I wanted to do was I wanted to make certain parts of the costume reflect like her costume has a lot of like silvers and blues to it and it's very glowy like when she does the transformation scenes like her entire being is very glowy the wings are glowy the halo is glowy like everything's glowy um so I wanted to make all the silver pieces all super like reflective so for instance the parts like this here it might be reflecting, I don't know. <laughs> um, like her bracelets I did with the reflected fabric, same thing with that, and like parts of the corset. Um, when I originally put it together, especially for the corset, like I wasn't thinking about how glowy it would be. Um, like at first I was like, oh, like it'll be a little bit glowy. But then I did my first reflective test and like the entire thing lit up. Like I was a traffic cone, um, <laughs> at least like with the top like corset part. And then with the skirt that I put, I don't like I did like later on with the blues and like that kind of thing. So it was definitely like interesting putting the entire costume together, but like I I definitely had a lot of fun with it like it was really weird to work with at first but like man the, like the effect is so cool and it's so unique and I'm like drawn to like unique designs and things so I think that's what like really pushed me to like build this costume to begin with. Let's, let's talk about the mm -hmm. wig. Uh, uh, what can you mm -hmm. tell us about how you constructed it? So with the wig, I bought the base blue wig from Rockstar Wigs, uh, so mostly because they have such amazing wig, qual uh, wig quality and the color was perfect for uh, the character. Um, and then I sewed the pink wefts in, which I didn't expect to take as long as it did. Like, I think I spent like two days working on just the wig. Uh, because like what I had to do was I had to go from the back to the front and take out a whole bunch of blue wefts from the bottom. Um, and, and I think I took up like half half the wefts like came out and then I replaced them with the pink wefts and I sewed them in because I'm crazy. Uh, <laughs> uh, and that took like a really long time. And then of course I had to go in and like cut it to make sure that it actually like blent in nicely with the wig, uh, with my very awful scissors, which I finally updated or upgraded to nicer scissors 
because man, like those Walmart scissors were just like, mm, they're just like barely doing it. Uh, but that took a long time. <laughs> and then of course, like I had to like make it so that I can like put the halo in and have that float there with the battery pack that actually dangles behind my back, which allows me to move my head more. Uh, although super weird because it's like a like a dangling ba like battery pack, and then with the halo, like I use like wires to like hold it up so it stays and lights. It's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, okay, you mentioned before about it was a lot of fun to make. Like I feel like I made better with wigs. Before you mentioned about uh, the corset, I, I keep hearing that corset making and adjusting is is pretty much hell. <laughs> um, did you have any problems? It is. It really is. <laughs> Oh my god, like I had so many problems. <laughs> well, first of all, like the material that I chose to work with, <laughs> reflective fabric, um, is really hard to work with one and it does not stretch, has no stretch at all. So um, I had to make it very, 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 very precise with the corset. And I also like, if I stitched a certain spot, um, the hole will be left in that the needle made. So. I really like couldn't mess up um, or or at least couldn't mess up a lot because you could see my flaws if I were to like take the stitching out and like redo it because it would be half the holes in it from the first stitch. So um, sewing that was really interesting. I think I redid the corset three times. Um, first time was a fitting problem. Like I looked like it was just way too big on me and I had to like modify it down a lot. That was probably like one of the biggest fixes I did to um, the quarter set. Um, the, I think it was the second time it was a size problem. Like it, it's like it was just way too long. So I had to actually take the entire thing apart, go back to square one um, and uh, take off like an inch from the bottom and then re-sew it back up, put the lining in all the bones, I had to cut the bones shorter because of course it was shorter and like re put it together it, like it took like forever but um i finally got it to where it actually one fits me and two like actually is very similar to um the character model so that that was referencing throughout the entire build so it was worth it, it took a lot of time but worth it in the end to go back <laughs> and do those changes <laughs> okay uh, i noticed that you have a blue heart um what is that made of yes yes uh, that is resin. Um, I did some resin casting. There are three of these hearts. Um, what we did was I had my partner print out a 3D heart for me, and then I sanded it down so it got nice and smooth, and I made a silicone mold for it. Um, then I mixed some resin and some of like blue shimmery powder dust into it and I poured it into my mold and I made three cute little hearts that I ended up uh, pinning to my uh, cosplay. Uh, there's one here and I also have two on the side that are attached to some bows. Oh, okay. Uh, what other details can you share with us about your cosplay? I noticed you also made um, um, stuff for your arms. Uh, anything else you want to share? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, yes, so I did make some things for my arms. Uh, like I have these little glove things. Uh, these two are actually separate because like I said previously, the, <laughs> the reflective fabric doesn't stretch. So like um, this is very stretchy like material. Like I love this material, uh, but I couldn't really attach it to this. So I actually have this separate from this. So this goes on first and then the armbands. And I just made them like as uh tight to my arm as i can like without actually hurting myself um some other cool things uh about the costume i have a sword here is my sword um ooh, you can see it yay so long um it is actually made out of foam with a metal uh dowel through the center so it stays straight and i actually covered it in reflective fabric so it's all covered in it which was a really weird experience because i've never actually covered a prop in fabric before, uh, let alone reflective fabric. Um, so like every part is like a separate little reflective fabric piece. And it's really cool. Like it actually like reflects, like it's weird. Like sometimes like I'm walking um, to like bed or like whatever and it's like midnight and I like look at my prop and it like reflects light at me and it kind of like freaks me out because I'm like, oh, <laughs> I, I'm, like I wasn't expecting it to like flash light back at me. 
but it's really cool like super nifty wow prop. <laughs> wow you put so many details into your cosplay um how long did it take you to do it and if you don't mind sharing how much did this cost you um i started this project back in june i didn't finish it until late last month um so june I think it's like three months, about three months worth of work went into this costume. Um, simply because like I was working with so many new materials. I was just like, ah, <laughs> I got like, I gotta learn how to actually work with reflective fabric, which was crazy. Um, the amount of money, um, well, reflective fabric ain't cheap. <laughs> uh, same thing with all the lights. So gosh, I'd probably say that I, I think I spent around, 600 or 700 dollars for this costume simply because like the lights was were so expensive the wig was so expensive and the reflective fabric was so expensive i think with the reflective fabric they like sell it for like 30 dollars a yard or like 20 like depending on like if you hit a sale or not um i think i got some of it with the sale but still pretty pricey but like really cool to like have the ability to work with um like i definitely enjoyed experimenting with all this cool new material and like with the new lights like these lights are like super cool uh real expensive but like really cool <laughs> to work with <laughs> if you had to start this from scratch again what would you do differently i definitely do the wings differently um uh, the wings which are not here right now since i would not be able to move um I would actually choose a different foam because the foam that I choose was, I use like a transparent foam so that way the wings light up. Um, instead, I would I would go for the same foam, but I would do a thinner thickness. Uh, that way it would trans like shine light through it better uh, because something that I noticed with like transparent foam is if it's really thick, it kind of has a hard time um putting light through it um so i actually had to like adapt because like when i found this out like I, like there was no way that i had time to like uh buy some more like transparent foam because it was coming from like canada and that and, and that take way too long to get to me so i had to work with what i had and i had to like create like this cavity that's inside the uh the, like the wings so that wings went like from like one thing of foam to like two things of foam because i had to like space it out so that the light can pass through it completely uh, but yeah like i definitely like go back and redo the wings plus like that was like my first time like really like working on wings um like for all the years that i've cosplayed like i i i don't know why i have never worked with wings before and um this was like my first big project with wings so i definitely go back and redo those okay if i may ask is is when you put it all together with the wings is it very comfortable to to walk around in this cosplay um i mean comfortable asterisks um like the most uncomfortable part about it well would more so be like with my mobility um like with the wings like they're like straight out and uh sometimes i forget that they're there and i'm sure like when conventions come back and i do start to wear this at, at cons um i'm gonna forget that i have wings and i'm like wider and <laughs> with them so um running into doors is is definitely a problem slash other things in general uh like i know like when we shot the costume a few weeks ago like i kept forgetting that i had wings and i had to like crab walk through doors or like through places like, like couldn't just walk straight which was like so weird <laughs> Uh, the wings are cool though, but I was like, ah, oh, man, like I can't walk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can't get through anything. <laughs> so, so for anyone that looks at this and become inspired to want to create something like it, what would you be? What would your What would your advice be for anyone trying to start this out? My best advice, and like this is my advice for like, like whichever cosplay that you want to do, is don't don't be afraid to fail because. We all make mistakes. I think I failed with like every part of this costume and I have to go back and like redo so many things. Um, and like, I know it's like really like discouraging like when you mess up, but like you can always go back and like fix it. Like it, like no one's stopping you. Like there's no cosplay police that goes like, oh no, you have to be perfect the first time. No, like you can like mess up like as many times as, as you like and 
you can fix it like as many times as you like. Uh, like a cosplay doesn't have to be done until like you say it's done. Like you can keep going back to it and like making improvements and, and like learning from it. Um, because I think like cosplay is a huge like learning experience as well. Like you can learn so much from it. Like I've learned so much about this. And like now like looking back at it, like there are absolutely things that I go back and like I'd change like, but that's what's great about cosplay. Like is like, you can just keep like growing and keep learning and keep creating and like that kind of thing so like don't be afraid to mess up like everyone happens like we all mess up sometimes um like you shouldn't feel ashamed for making a mistake that can be fixed wow that's a that's a great way to um to end the segment so before we wrap up though uh mm -hmm. where can people find more of your work online uh i pretty much on everything uh you can find me on twitter it's LM Cosplays, LM Cosplays. Uh, I'm, I'm on Instagram, which is Labanac. Uh, so it's Campbell spelled backwards, except for the K, yeah. Uh, uh, Facebook, uh, so Labanac and Manglu Cosplays. Uh, YouTube, also the same thing. Basically, just look up Labanac and Mangaloo, and typically a skull will come up. That's usually me. So I'm everywhere. <laughs> we'll put um, the links in the description below. And uh, mm -hmm. thank you so much for sharing this. This is in, that's in, this is incredible. Great job. Thank uh, you. <laughs> I try. <laughs> and for viewers out there, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more cosplay content. Please be safe out there.